Hey, hello and welcome back to Alex Goes Sailing. In this episode, we're going to find a solution for my deck drain and uh, trying to get that to filter out as quickly as possible. Now, the problem lies at the back of the boat. Here you can see where I've had it under water already and you can see the water line roughly. And uh, you can see the two outlets that we've got, um, different fitting sizes. So I think this is 19, this is like 25-ish mil or something like that. And you see where they're located and you wouldn't exactly want to put them any lower and put them central doesn't really work inside the boat because it's right out of the way and you want good access to these and uh, so the deck at the back of the boat probably sits this high up above this point here so when you're trying to imagine all the water up here trying to drain and siphon its way out of here which it isn't going to do with the gravity and because this needs to be considerably higher to be able to force the water out at a decent rate to make it drain the cockpit fast enough now what i've come up with to solve the solution is on most cruising boats and stuff they have showers and on some boats they have sail shunt boxes and the sump boxes have automatic bilge pumps in them effectively so i have one here uh, this is a really really cheap one probably about 50 pounds and uh, comes with a 750 gallon per hour pump uh, which is very good and it comes with all these different size uh, outlets which is also really handy so you've got i think this is the 19 mil so that we run out of that smaller pipe and then you've got these two different sizes another one here so if you wanted to you can run multiple deck drains to this and uh, have it fully functioning actually this is similar size to this so you could just run two two drains which is possible or you could run a pump to a pump or other things like that but basically uh, I've got the 750 gallon per hour and uh, I've also picked up a 700 gallon per hour because I actually want to have a bilge pump in the boat that's automatic just in case I leave the boat overnight somewhere and it starts taking on a bit while I want it to be able to pump itself out so I'm thinking um, based on the size that the, the deck drain actually is on on the deck and I think it's about a one inch so we're going to plumb off a one inch fitting to this and I'm pretty sure we're going to do a test um, with the 750 and the 600 and I'm pretty sure the 600 will be able to pump this box out plenty fast enough to meet the flow that's coming in so and and the likeliness of waves coming over and just filling out the cockpit constantly uh, shouldn't be too much of a worry so getting a 600 gallon per hour is uh, well good and then we'll have the 750 for actually pumping out the boat which is ideal so the way we're running this test is we've got it hooked up the um the brown wire with the white stripe in it that is the automatic wire and then you've got the just the brown one for just a manual so you can have that on the switch separately and i've just got the crocodile clipped up to here and i'll just place the automatic one on there and once i've got it filled up and uh, where the breather is when the water line comes down to there because it'll constantly be flowing out the pump outlet because it'll be above there we'll bring it up to the breather the breather hole which is this one here and uh, as soon as it hits there, I'll hit start on the timer and we'll see how long it takes. Right, let's start this test. Uh, got my phone for a timer and we'll also have to do it on the camera. Uh, got the hose here, I'm just gonna fit it up. Let's turn this down to shower. Fill that up. Right, it's just at the breather hole now, so three, two, one, go. Stop. Just like that. That was just over four seconds, I think. Um, but yeah, that was pretty quick. So now we'll do a test with uh, doing it constantly with the hose. So bring it up to the breather line again, and we'll hold the hose on, and then see what intervals it can pump at. Uh, to keep the level down. Eight, two, one, go. that one that was pretty quick 
So now we'll switch over to the other pump and plug this one. Uh, swapping these out is actually quite easy. Um, just flick this out, just pull that out. So our pump comes out. It has got a shield and stuff for actually, when you put the case on top, it's got like this netting that fits around the pump to stop any rubbish getting in there, which is good. And then it's got a transparent lid so you can actually see through it. But this is actually a, a non-return valve, somewhat non-return valve in the uh, actual outlet. So that's one other positive, but we'll hook this up now. This is the 600 gallon per hour, and this is Seaflow. The other one's just a Chinese unbranded thing. Uh, it's probably made exactly the same place, exactly the same casings, pretty much. Uh, but we'll see what the difference is. Right, is it hit the level? So. Stop. There you go. So that was about five and a half seconds ish. So not too bad. Now we'll do the constantly running one. Go. Right, so that's that testing complete. Uh, this is the pump I'm gonna leave in it anyway because 600 gallons per hour it seems to be plenty. And I'll put the 750 gallon per hour, this one, Chinese knockoff kind of thing. Uh, exactly the same build, same thing effectively. Uh, made probably in the same place, same factory. So we'll have this as the actual build pump for the boat because it'll be able to pump all the water much faster and it's probably got a little longer distance to go than this pump will have because uh, this is going to be mounted right underneath the floor whereas that's going to be a little bit further down so uh, this should do the trick there's our box we've got let's turn this light on you can see down there we've got the this hose here which is going to be for the inlet from the deck drain and then this black one here that's running up that is going to be for the outlet to the through hole and that was what was leaking before down here um because we didn't have anything on it but we spent the hose over and crimped it around it's good to go but we'll hook that up plumb it up and we've got loads of excess so i can do uh anti-siphon at the top until i get uh, a one-way valve and uh well, this would be just resting. That's the only one I'm gonna fit. That is just just resting, and uh, we'll we'll get the hose clamps on it. And then for the wiring, we've got um, the three different wires. So you've got the ground, and then you've got the automatic, and then the manual. I've got to slide in there and cut the hose and do some things. So this is not gonna be fun. Time to get cutting. Uh, got a tiny little blade. I'm gonna go in there and cut it. I've marked it with me uh, sharpie. Uh, make the cut and I can hook that one directly in and then this one I'll just uh, hook directly on and then I can shorten it at the other end on the through hole because it's easier to get to and then I can size, size it to the right size and length because uh, that would be a permanent until I do my one way valve which I'll probably fit somewhere in the line but I can just undo it and put it out so I'll get cut in and this uh, idiot who designed this eh a little longer than a few minutes later and uh, we'll hook up the back one first then we're gonna hook up the one that's in there and I'm not looking forward to that oh I got a bit wet a bit of water in that pipe right just hooked up that uh, line there so that's running on the black one and that'll pull through and then I've got this main hole which I've cut and I've got Hose clamp and a tool. Uh, I'm just gonna climb in the depths down there 
and connect it to the other pipe and then these wires are long enough that they'll come out at the back and uh, I can wire them up to the two wires that are just there uh, and then that'll be this working uh, the manual one's hooked up so that's just the hose that I can move around until I actually get it like fixed maybe I'm not quite sure what I'll do with that just a manual one that I can put in places um, then there is one that's going to go underneath the deck as well but that's for another time because I have the manual one for now and that's all you really need um, so yeah I'm going to crawl back underneath that dirty little place which I should really clean out at some point let's get these Many hours later. It's getting hot in there. Jeez. I did pick the larger hole. Might not have been a good idea. It's very hard to get on. It's slightly oversized. That means it won't come back off again. Which you don't really want it. I had to go back underneath there. And I have a hose clamp on it anyway, so. Right. We fitted the uh, sump box to the back of the boat. We have the cat here helping and my brother. We're gonna pour some water into the uh, drain there and it should shoot out right here. So if you pour away, Daniel, and there goes the cat, you're gonna get a soaked cat. Eventually, he's pouring now. There we go. And she stops again. And is that it? That's all she wrote from that junk. That's good. Job done. Job finished. That's it for this episode. We've got the pump installed and it's working great. In the next episode, we're going to be sorting out the mast stepping and coming up with a solution for that. So that'd be stage one. And uh, yeah, and then we go back out sailing. So like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.